Hi there, it's Steve from Couch and Counseling, uh, and I'm going to do a little video segment today on hoarding. And the reason why I'm going to do a video segment on hoarding is hoarding seems to fascinate a lot of people. Um, a couple of years ago, there were some shows out in the United States about, I don't know what they were called, I think it was the world's biggest hoarders or something. Uh, shows, TV shows about people who had hoarded their entire uh, life collection of all kinds of collectibles within their house and basically were no longer able to live safely within their own home. And hoarding is kind of interesting because hoarding, uh, and hoarders in particular, most people usually look upon hoarders with a kind of mixed combination of pity and kind of disgust and kind of a morbid fascination. How did they get into a state like that? How did their house get so incredibly cluttered? How can they keep collecting all these things and keep on collecting all these things even when they know their house is getting smaller and smaller with all the items inside their house? So, uh, what I'd like to say is uh, first of all, there's a, there's a really interesting character in uh, The Hobbit. I was going to say The Lord of the Rings. There's an interesting character in The Hobbit, and his name is Smaug. And he's a dragon who sits inside uh, a mountain on top of the dwarves, I think it's the dwarves, hoard of gold, right? Now, he just sits there inside on this mound of gold and treasures and, and jewels and so on and so forth and he just hoards it. He doesn't use it, he doesn't eat the gold, he doesn't play with it or do anything with it, he just simply hoards it. And in that character of Smaug from The Hobbit we have an idea about why it is that people do hoarding to begin with, right? And what it is, is it's usually linked up to anxiety and fear, chronic, really debilitating anxiety and fear. So, for example, you have no desire whatsoever to have 1,200 cans of peas, or 1,200 cans of peaches, or uh, 1,200 cans of, uh, I don't know, pineapples, or 500 bars of soap. But, if you are somebody who, for example, has lived through depression, where things were in deficit, where you couldn't get what you needed, where you were rationed on food stamps, and you had lived through that trauma, through that experience, you are likely never going to forget how desperate things were. So, there's going to be a part of you that always is going to be looking around and searching and seeking to try to keep those things in close to you. You know, during the 19th century, um, a lot of people who lived in 19th century homes compared to the 20th century or the 21st century would notice that a lot of Victorians had a lot of knickknacks and bric-a-brac throughout their homes. And part of this, okay, part of this was to be able to feather their home, to be able to make their home comfortable. And that also feeds into it as well too. So someone who is hoarding is also trying to make themselves feel safe, is trying to make themselves feel comfortable by having all these things around them so that they're safe, they're comfortable, they're cozy, right? Just like Smog feels comfortable and safe, Smog rather, feels comfortable and safe when he's got all of his gold and his riches and his hoards around him. So too, when people who have lived through the Depression, who hoard um, canned goods or other stuffs or dried goods, they feel comfortable and safe and secure when they're able to have these things around him. But there's also another piece, and, and I'm just going to share a quick uh, story with you. There was a young, uh, an, a middle-aged man now, who at one point, not one of my clients, but someone who had, when he was a young boy, had an excess of toys, and what his father did, very traumatic, was burn all of his toys. So there was a huge emotional pain there, a huge emotional um, scar. Okay? And as a result, what happened afterwards is the child, who then became a man, 
was constantly looking to replace or replenish or refurbish the toys that he had and subsequently later in life became a hoarder. Now, what you want to kind of think about if you yourself are somebody who hoards is what do I do? I know I'm living in this uh, state of chaos. I've got mounds and mounds of paper or mounds and mounds of books or DVDs or CDs or records or uh, uh, antiques or trinkets or bric-a-bac or whatever it might be and I just keep collecting. What you want to do is think about what Mark Twain said, Samuel Clemens, that this is a habit. It's a habit. And the best way to be able to cure it is to coax it down the stairs step by step rather than throwing it straight out the door. So sometimes on these hoarding shows, for example, in the United States, they'll say, right, we're coming in and we're going to clear everything out and you're going to make a decision about what you want. Wrong. Because what that's going to do is that's going to push up the individual's anxiety even more. And what you will eventually find after time is because the person has not been able to do it gradually and has been able to ease into the change process, you'll find that over time that individual who had gotten rid of a whole bunch of stuff, had had a complete clear out, will eventually start to accumulate it back. So if you are someone who hoards, what I would suggest is work with yourself. Start putting little things away, bit by bit, clearing it away. And the other part, a part of that will help you is you will slowly become adjusted to a new living experience, a new living environment. It's kind of like having the temperature gauge on your thermostat. If it's set at 25 degrees Celsius, which is uh, I think 75 or 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit if you're using Imperial, if you slowly start to set the thermostat down, eventually you'll have it at normal room temperature. So if you are someone who hoards, don't throw everything out, but start the process of gradually working away at it so you can become accustomed to a new homeostatic level, which will be livable experience for you. If you want more information on this or other mental health topics, please go to my website, couchandcounseling.ca, or look at my blog, couchandcounselingblogspot.ca. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye for now.